everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today for the webinar. Um, we have Chantel Wilson and um, Kimberly Jones with us. They're account managers on our education success team, and they will be hosting our webinar and leading us through um, five reports um, in, in Analyst, and I'm excited to hear what they have to say. Um, if you're just joining us, um, the webinar will be recorded and it will be sent to everyone that uh, registered for the webinar. So if you have to hop off early or if you have coworkers who can join us but they registered, everyone will get a recording. Um, and if you have questions as we go, just type them in the question box um, in the side panel and we will get to those at the end. Um, we'll try to get to you as many as we can. Um, if we run out of time or if we maybe don't have an answer for your question, we will make sure to filter those out to your account managers and have people follow up with you. Um, so we put in questions over there as we go. And I think that's the end of my housekeeping things. I'll hand it over to Chantel and she can take it away. Hello, thanks Chantel. Hello and welcome everyone. Thanks for spending the next hour-ish with us as we go through top five reports and analysts that you are not using but should be is what Kimberly and I decided to uh, title this. Um, this webinar. So maybe you actually are using the reports, but if you are a good review and if you're not, then there's some new material for you. So I'm a, I'm Chantel Wilson. I am an account manager at Lightcast. I've been here about a year and a half. I currently serve um, the entire nation of Canada. So I work with universities and colleges across Canada as well as um, states in the, in the northwest, in the northwest. Kimberly, you want to introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, of course. Um, I'm Kimberly Jones. I'm also an account manager. I work specifically with the Southeast Community Colleges and State Colleges in that area. And I've been at Lightcast for about six months now. Perfect. Cool. So we decided to put together some slides just to do high level. This is what we're going to cover. Um, but then, well, mostly this is going to be practical demonstration. So um, we are going to... Um, welcome, and then overview of the reports, and then practical demonstration, and then we'll have time for questions and answers afterwards. So um, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to do the first two reports. So um, the first report that I'm going to walk through is called, for our US clients, it's called the Regional Comparison Report and is found under the regional, the Regions tab. Um, for our Canadian clients, it's actually called the Market Comparison Report and is found under the Occupations tab. So. Um, this report is super helpful um, because it allows you to be able to compare multiple regions um, to, and look at population data as well as industry data and occupation data about those different regions and being able to do a side-by-side -side comparison so that you can see um, you know, where are jobs increasing, um, where are they decreasing, um, and where should we really focus in particular efforts based on the region. Um, and then the other report we're going to jump into, which is actually going to okay. be. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. Your um, presenter view is on the left. Um, you're sharing that part. It's just, it's blocking part of the slide. Oh. Is that better? No, I can still see it. Is that better? Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay, well, here we go. Okay, so. Um, the second report that I'm going to jump into is actually going to be um, staffing patterns. And this is going to be more of like a three for one special, actually, because I'm going to jump around to three different reports. But we're going to start in the staffing patterns. Um, and staffing patterns are particularly helpful for um, being able to look at the occupational makeup of a particular industry um, based on, and then you can actually like look at the percentages of the occupations that make up that industry. So we'll, we're going to use hospitals as an example, but it'll be, you'll be able to see. Um, so for the hospital industry, what percentage of, of the occupations are nursing related or surgeons or co custodians, that sort of a thing. Um, and then we'll actually jump around to an inverse staffing pattern so that we can look at the exact opposite. And then Kimberly will take over. Yes, 
Um, so after those two reports, we'll be jumping into some more job postings type of reports. We're going to look at the hot and cold skills report, which is a good overview to see what skills are hot and which ones are cold right now based off of job posting data. Um, so we'll be able to see what are the increasing skills and what are the decreasing skills. Um, next, we will have the company talent profile. Um, so this is a really good way to get an overview of a specific company if you want to look at that. Um, with data relating to what jobs that company has, um, who are the employees, where are they coming from and where are they going to um, whenever they are with or before the company and after the company. Um, and then also what are the competitors that are related to that company as well. And then lastly, we are going to take a sneak peek, well not more than a sneak peek, but we are going to take a look at profile analytics. And this is a really good report to see what the talent profiles and worker profiles look like in a specific region. Um, you can also see what um, institutions they have come are coming from, what kind of jobs are in a specific region, and what kind of skills they have. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into our um, practical demonstration. So for this first um, report, I'm actually going to be on our Canadian side of our data, um, but for our U.S. clients, when we're looking at, here, let me click over to U.S. So when we're looking at the regional comparison report, that's found under regions and then regional comparison. And then you set your, um, you go ahead and set your parameters here. For our Canadian clients who are using this, this is actually going to be found under our occupations tab. It's called market comparison. Um, but it is the exact same, it is the exact same report. So first you pick the regions that you want to compare. I find this particularly helpful if, you know, if you're working in a system of colleges and so you actually have colleges in different locations and you kind of want to see based on this location, what should we be focused on? What are, you know, the particular um, job demands or skill demands in this county versus this particular county. Um, so that that works really well. It also works well if you are, you know, a community college who has a multi-county um, service region. So if you're serving five different counties, being able to know um, what, you know, being able to compare and contrast the data all in one place is super helpful. Um, the other, uh, you can also, compare states as well. So if you're, you know, working at a university and you're looking at, you know, California compared to New York compared to um, Texas, then you can throw those in and do a nice side by side comparison. Um, you can choose your your area as, you know, drive time or radius from address if you wanted to grab, you know, a 60 mile region or a 60 kilometer region. Um, I went ahead and grabbed all of the different uh, provinces, just so we could compare province to province, and then go ahead and select different industries to look at. So um, you can come in and type in as many as as many as you'd like. I've already selected manufacturing, healthcare and social assistance, and professional scientific and technical services because I noticed that um, in another report I ran, I looked to see what are the highest ranked industries by a couple different things by wage by um, jobs and by growth. And these were some of the among the top three. And so I wanted to look at these particularly, but you can add in others. Um, go ahead and type in the ones you want to look at and then just select whichever one you want to see. Um, but you can also get rid of them also if you change your mind. Same with occupations. You can add in as many occupations as you'd like to look at. So if we wanted to look at um, Accountants, so you can go ahead and add those in and then remove at any time also. So you can also set your time frame. So um, looking at, you know, historical data, if you're wanting to go back and grab some historical government data, but we also project um, on the US side, you'll see the projections out to 10 years. On the Canadian side, we project out to seven. So we're going to grab a 2028 projection here. There will always be recommended buckets of data to grab, so you could always grab, you know, industry jobs and growth, occupations job and growth, but you can always custom data select. Um, so when you come in here, you'll be able to see what are all the potential data points that you could pull into this particular report in order to compare um, side by side. Um, including, you know, regional metrics like population, 
um, in just different industry metrics, including location quotient or, you know, demand met by imports and occupation metrics as well. I've gone ahead and selected the ones that I wanted to see and bring into my table. So um, with that, I'll go ahead, select and run. And then this report is gonna probably take a second to run just because I'm pulling in so many regions and different um, data points to compare. But when it pulls in, it's gonna um, be able to compare side by side the different regions that I've brought into my report. And from here, you can do a really quick at a glance look at um, you know, um, population and jobs that were held in 2021 compared to 2028. Um, what does that change look like over time? And then what is the average wage? Just because those are the data points I decide to bring in. You can kind of compare across the different provinces. As well as looking at um, the different industry metrics for manufacturing healthcare and professional scientific services, being able to see um, the jobs, what were the wages and what's that change over time, which provinces looks like um, for this particular, you know, for healthcare, this, this uh, industry is projected to grow across all provinces, but where is it projected to grow the most? Looks like BC, Quebec, um, and then just pulling in that same data, but about particular occupations. Um, I decided to pull in average monthly unique postings as well. So we could kind of see what is the demand um, within the, the job postings for this particular occupation. So not, not just like what is the projected outlook over time, but what is current demand right now. And that is basically this report, but mostly helpful for just a quick at a glance comparison of the different of the different regions. You can always save this report to your to your home screen. You can also export into Excel, PDF or CSV. Um, and with that, we're going to go ahead and jump into staffing patterns. So still on the Canadian side here with industries, the staffing patterns will be found under the industries tab, staffing patterns right here. You can select your industry, your region you wanna look at and that selected time frame. I'm actually gonna jump over to my US side and run this report in the US side. For US, um, you're actually gonna find it in the exact same place. So industry um, and then staffing patterns all the way down here. We'll go ahead and look at, I think I said I want to do hospitals is what I mentioned. So let's grab, we can grab hospitals for a selected region. Um, well, Kimberly's in North Carolina, so we can leave it at North Carolina. But for, for selecting a region, you can look up to nationwide, depending on the, the data access that you have, but we have up to nationwide, we can look at a particular state, you can look at MSA, county groups of counties and down to the zip code as well um, and then you can always change your time frame that you want to look at and we'll just go ahead and run this report and it's just going to let us know within this particular industry of hospitals what are all of the different occupations that make up that particular industry and helpful to look at what is that change over time. So what occupations within this particular industry are projected to grow over time? Um, but then also, um, what is that total percent of jobs in the industry? When you're using the, the uh, table, you can sort by clicking. So I've sorted it to organize by change over time, but I can actually have it sort so we can bring to the top of our list the um, the most occupations held within this particular industry is going to be registered nurses and then this is going to start from greatest to least working its way down. This is a lot of data pulled into the into the table which 
can be extremely helpful and sometimes unhelpful at the same time. So there's within all of the different tables that we have, you can always filter by the different columns of data that you've brought into your report. So if I wanted to say, okay, let's go ahead and filter by, um, I only wanna look at the occupations that are projected to change by um, greater than or equal to 200 over the next, I think I have it set at, <laughs> 11 years. Um, so this way it's going to limit a little bit and just bring in those um, occupations that are projected to, to grow by more than 200. And you can put on um, more filters than that. So if you wanted to say projected to grow by 200, but also um, that median hourly earnings is going to be greater than or equal to um, $35 an hour, you could apply that and then that's going to limit it even further. And that's just functionality on all of our different tables, not just the staffing patterns. Um, so for this, what you can do is if there's a particular occupation that you would like to dive a little deeper into, then you can actually click on, on this particular occupation and this jump to feature is gonna pop up. So for our Canadian clients, you only have the option to jump to the occupation table. Um, but for our US clients, you can jump to the occupation overview or the table. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump straight to the occupation overview because I would like to dive a little bit deeper on this particular occupation. If you are using the, the Canadian analyst, then I'd recommend doing this where you would actually jump to the table and then from there select on this occupation again and then jump to the occupation overview. It's an extra step, but it gets you there in the end. So we're going to take this and jump into the occupation overview so that we can actually do a bit of a deeper dive on this particular occupation. Um, because I jumped from my staffing pattern table report into this particular occupation, um, into this particular overview, it's actually saved my search parameters. So I'm still looking at North Carolina. My time frame is still set as it was, and I'm now just looking at this one. Um, this one occupation. So it'll tell me a bit about this occupation in North Carolina, including how many jobs are there, what is the compensation compared to the national average, as well as what is the demand in the job postings. Um, it'll give you some historical as well as projected um, change over time with some of these um, different states being compared. So you can kind of compare the, the different regions. This is a, a little glimpse at the, uh, the report that I ran previously. As well as a breakdown of throughout the state, where is this occupation mostly held? And then here where you can see the opposite, um, actually of, of the, well, no, sorry. You actually get to see where this occupation is held across different industries. So um, physicians, are mostly going to be found in the offices of physician industry, but they can also be found across these other industries. And this is where I actually want to jump to our inverse staffing pattern. So this is going to do the exact opposite of the report that I first started in. So instead of looking at a particular industry and seeing all of the occupations that fall under that industry, we're now looking at a particular occupation and seeing what industry can that occupation be found across. I, um, I always find this particularly helpful and interesting because I feel like I have a very narrow-minded view of where all these occupations are going to be found when in fact there's actually quite a different place. There's quite a few different industries that you could work in um, should you hold this one particular occupation. Um, again, this is going to look like a um, just like a regular table. So you can sort by clicking at the top. So if we wanted to bring the percent of occupations in the industry to the very top, um, and then we can ink that if you want to draw your attention with color. Um, so that you can see mostly this occupation is going to be found in this particular industry, but there are other industries where this occupation can be held. Um, and those are the two reports that I wanted to share with you. So I'm going to go ahead, pass this off to Kimberly. Awesome. 
All right, can you hear me, Chantel? Yes, I can. Awesome, just making sure. And... All right, and we should be able to see the analyst screen. Does that look good? Yes, I can. Okay. Awesome, thank you. All right, um, so what we're gonna be doing now is we are going to jump into the hot and cold skills report. So to find that you go under job postings um, and then within the job postings section, the hot and cold skills is found um, on the bottom right. So we're gonna start with this report. Um, and like I said before, hot and cold skills is a good way to see what skills are in demand for a specific occupation and which skills are becoming res less relevant um, using our job posting data. So with the hot and cold skills, you can look into it with a couple of different options. You can look by a specific SOC code, ONET codes, or by our LightCast Occupations Taxonomy, which is what the LOT is. Um, you can narrow it down by a specific region, specific timeframes, and then there are as well some advanced options if you want to look at specific job titles or companies um, to see what skills are increasing and decreasing within those. Um, for today's report, we're going to do just a simple SOC code. We're going to do software and web developers um, for our SOC code. And we're going to pick the, I've decided to pick Raleigh carry MSA as well, but we're going to be jumping around to other states in the other profiles um, or the other reports so we can get just a wide variety of things. Um, and then here you have the option of selecting a state or time frame where you can select from one month slash year to another month slash year. But we also have the um, somewhat newer preset time frame um, where you can pick a certain set of days between one day, seven days, 14, 30, so on and so forth um, to look at the data from those last few things. Um, so we're actually going to select the 60 days. And one thing that is really cool about this is if you save your report and you um, set an email reminder to yourself, you can get a notification every so many days to kind of rerun this report. And whenever you do, it's going to have all new debt all new data based off of your preset time frame. So if you say it to remind you every 30 days when you go in and run the report based off that preset time frame, it's going to be new information based off of the last 30 days. So for today's report, we're just going to stick with these three simple filters here. Go ahead and run it. Um, and we start with, it's a pretty short report, but it gives you a lot of really good information um, in regards to skills. So we start with a hot and cold skills comparison here. So it's gonna show you the different skills that are involved in a software and web developer occupation, but in comparison to how often these skills are showing up in job postings at the start of our timeframe, and then also at the end of our timeframe. And if they're increasing or decreasing, that's gonna be noted by if it's green or if it's red. Um, so we can go through and we can see what are the skills in web developing that are growing? So a lot of times we'll see what languages are becoming really popular for programmers, um, what kind of methodologies, things like that. Um, and then you can also see what languages are becoming res less relevant. Um, so it looks like you know CSS is becoming less relevant. Um, Jira, just based off of the job posting data in the last 60 days within this area. And that can be for a couple different reasons. Um, for example, in the Raleigh area, Apple is moving here. So, you know, there might be some more job postings that are asking for those skills that, you know, an Apple software developer may need versus a different kind of software developer. Um, so you can see here, you know, what skills are increasing, what skills are decreasing, and then you can actually see the numerical value. Um, so how many postings is this coming from? What's the percent change? So if it's a higher percentage, it's a quicker increase um, than a lower percentage. Um, and just one thing to keep in mind, this is just from the last 60 days, which is why our numbers are kind of lower in the posting amount. Um, but still, we can still see that change there. If you wanted to see higher amount of postings, you could just extend that to the last year or last six months or something like that. Um, so we can see all of the different skills. It starts with um, just the top few, but if you wanted to see more, you can just click on more to see a larger list. And then after that, we have this really cool chart here um, that is going to show you your skill um, validity over time. 
Um, so it's going to show you um, what in the job postings, these skills, are they consistent throughout each quarter? Do some skills increase during each quarter? That kind of thing um, based off of the job postings. So you can look at it as an overall picture, but if you highlight over the skill, it will remove all the other ones so you can focus on it. So for example, our communications here, you know, it seems to be pretty consistent from um, August to October last year to August to October this year um, in the number of times it's showing up in the postings. Same thing with agile methodology. Um, Java is something that does look like it had a little bit of a dip um, in May this year, but it's kind of increasing. So you can kind of go through and see, you know, is there a specific skill that has a common cadence where it increases and decreases every quarter or something like that? Um, I believe, I think it was, looks like API does that a little bit, has a little bit of like a cosine or sine wave there where it increases and decreases at the same time um, for each quarter. And then just some other information there. If you do want more detail on those skills, you can click on more detail and it's going to bring you to the job postings analytics for the specific occupation. Um, so the hot and cold skills, once again, is just a simple, sweet report, but it can really give you some good information, especially if you have programs that are having ever-changing skill requirements, like a lot of web development jobs, anything that deals with a lot of technology, even some um, nursing skills and things like that, marketing, um, so that way you can stay on top of the labor market trends. All right, and next we're gonna jump, jump back to the job postings. Um, for these next two reports, unfortunately, um, our Canadian clients do not have access to these. Um, and to this information. So if you are a Canadian client, if you want to take like a quick break, you can do so um, and come back for the Q&A, um, or you're welcome to watch, but you do not have access to this information, unfortunately. Um, but we're going to be going into the company talent profile. So this is a really good way to learn more information about a specific company um, in a specific region. So we can see what kind of jobs they offer, where are their employers coming from, employees coming from and going to, and more. Um, so we're going to click on that to start the report and we are actually not going to look at a hospital and not in raleigh we are going to take a look at um, the ever popular amazon because there's lots of information for them and we're going to look specifically in the miami fort lauderdale msa and for right now we're not going to select a specific job type we're just going to keep it pretty general to see what kind of information it can show us and then we're going to narrow it down after we take a look at that so we're going to go ahead and run our report with that one minute to load and it starts off with a breakdown of the worker profiles and um, where they're coming from how many are in what region so it does look like a large amount of our profiles are coming from the Miami region, um, kind of up the coast of Florida here. And you can see how, how many profiles are coming from which region. And these are just the profiles that are related to um, Amazon. Next, we'll have our business talent. So this is going to show us the top jobs in Amazon, um, what, how many company profiles there are, how many company postings there are, and then also in comparison to the local job supply, how many graduates there are in this region um, that can our, their program is related to this occupation, and then also what do the hourly earnings look like for this occupation, and has it been increased um, based off of salary last year? That's what the red and green arrows dictate on the last column there. So once again, it starts with just the first top 10 um, most common occupations for the company. But if you click on more, you can get a little bit more detailed. Amazon has a lot of different people, um, lots of stalkers, but then it comes into having customer service representatives, retail, marketing. It's a rather large company. Next, we will see the employee grain and drain. So this is really cool to see who are the similar companies that are either supplying talent for Amazon or removing talent from Amazon um, and at what kind of um, intensity in which they're doing that. So you can see here, Microsoft is both one, the biggest great, um, drainer and also biggest gainer. So it looks like a lot of people, um, about almost 4,000 people who go to Amazon came from Microsoft for working. 
But then on the same flip side, people, um, about 3,000 people go from Amazon and work for Microsoft. Um, so you can see what are the employers, where are they coming from and where are they going to. Looks like Walmart is a little bit less um, than Microsoft. And then we've got Target, US Army, Oracle, so on and so forth. So you can just see where is the talent coming from and where are they going to in terms of the specific company. And then now while the chart is always nice to look at, we do have those specific numbers below um, of how many of them were previously employed at this company and how many are following to that company. Next, we have what are the jobs that um, the company is actually posting for. So this is where I think it can get really good for um, institutions to see, you know, what are the jobs that maybe we can have a really good relationship with Amazon in this area and we can provide um, some of our workers or some of our students have, you know, certifications and programs um, where they can be a part of these jobs. Um, so Amazon does have 747 unique postings. Um, you can see, you know, have they had an increase in posting or a decrease in postings in the last year? And then also the median posting duration. And then we can see what do these postings look like um, in trend by quarter? So is there a specific quarter where everything really increases? Over the last year, has there been a big increase or a decrease? Um, so here we can see that transportation material and moving. There were a lot of postings um, August last year, but now there are a lot fewer, so from 429 to 101, then all the way down to 62 postings. Um, so a pretty big decrease there. And then you can also click through all the other ones to see what the changes are. It does look like overall they've had quite a decrease in the postings. And this could mean that they just have less demand, or maybe they are just posting once, and it could be kind of a cluster hire situation or something like that. Um, but this is what the data is showing us, at least for the trends, by the quarter. And then once again, you can jump into more detail on the job postings analytics is where that will bring you. And then lastly, the skill section is what I look to like, like to look at whenever we are going to dive into a specific um, job title or specific job area. Um, but you can see what skills is um, Amazon mentioning in most of their job postings. So lots of warehousing, package delivery, Amazon Web Services, um, and then it does look like they've got some programming skills mentioned as well um, that you can jump into. In that similar format where we are seeing, you know, how often are these skills showing up in the postings and what are their trends look like from quarter to quarter. And then we also have who is competing for the same talent. So who are the, what are the hiring trends for the top 15 companies in this region that are looking for the same talent? And once again, organized by that quarter, quarterly trends. Um, so we've got Amazon, Domino's Pizza seems to be one of their top competitors when it comes to their employees um, for what we're looking at here. So we haven't selected any specific um, type of job. This is just their overall job, so probably coming into that factor of a delivery person who delivers packages versus someone who delivers pizza. Um, I really appreciate both of those people. So thank you for them. <laughs> All right, um, so what I wanna do now is I wanna stay in this report, but I wanna show you how you can get a little bit more specific with it. Um, so we are going to narrow down into a specific job type. So I'm gonna go back to the setup and I still want to look at Amazon, but I want to look specifically into more of their business and financial operations, just to show you how the data can become a little bit more granular for um, if you were looking at maybe skills for a specific program or um, different job titles. So let's go ahead and run that. We're going to see the same information once again, but now just a little bit more specific. Um, these are our worker profiles. You know, now we have our top jobs, but now specific to this um, business and financial operations. So we have our human resource specialists that we're going to be seeing. Um, seems to be of really high supply for Amazon, as well as our management analyst, um, project man management specialist, so on and so forth. And then our companies are going to be pretty similar, but they'll change a little bit now that we're looking at um, a more specific type of job. So you can see what are the competitors when it comes to this specific um, occupation within Amazon. 
what um, jobs are they posting for? So there's only 42 unique postings when it comes to looking specifically at um, the business and financial um, occupations. So we've got our human resource business partners, staffing coordinators, business analysts, and you can also see those trends there. Um, looks like the human resource partners, they had a really um, quick dip in the kind of second, well, second quarter of the year. Um, but now it's starting to increase again. Um, same thing with recruiters. You can see that change there. And then this is where I really like to look at whenever I'm looking at a specific job or specific occupation. This is when the skills become a lot more tangible and a lot more applicable. Um, so you can see what are the skills that they are asking for, employee engagement, call center experience, business priorities, so on and so forth, um, organizational effectiveness. So these are things that you would wanna make sure that if you're doing a program that focuses on business and financial operations, that you're including these skills in there. Um, if you want your students to maybe have high success of getting a job at Amazon. Um, and then lastly, who are the competitor, uh, who's competing for the same talent? Um, so once again, this is gonna look a little bit different because now we are looking at a specific occupation rather than just the entirety of the business. Um, so we're gonna see some different businesses here that are looking for similar talent. All right, and that brings us to the end of the company talent profile. We have one more report to take a look at and then we'll have our Q&A section. Um, so for our last report, we're gonna be in the profile analytics, which is not in the job posting section, but it has its own section here at the bottom. Um, so for profile analytics, this is a really good way to see what the talent looks like in a specific region. Um, we have a couple different filters that you can apply um, for them. You can start with your region. You can pick a state, a city. You can pick a radius from an address. You can pick specific schools if you want to look at um, what profiles are mentioned in your institution. You can also select um, specific job titles, occupations, industries, companies specific programs. You can get really um, narrow with these filters if that's something that you want to do. Um, for the start of this report, we're going to start with the just Alabama. Um, and we're going to run the report just for that state just to see what is there. And then we're going to edit within the report if we want to look at a specific occupation um, or a specific school. So we're going to run Prevalent Analytics for the state of Alabama. And it's going to start by showing us how many profiles have been updated. And right now it's set um, to 2012 because I set it there. Um, that is your profile recency, which is a filter all the way at the bottom here. Um, and this is just so that way you're pulling in profiles um, since they've last been updated. So some people, you know, they'll make their profile and then they'll never touch it again. Um, like my dad, because he's been in the same job for forever. However, I update my profile pretty regularly just because I like to keep it updated with what I'm doing. Um, so you want to have a decent gap so that way you can still collect people who have been in the job for a while. Um, so that way you're still getting their information, but you want to make sure you don't go too far back to get a bunch of um, dormant profiles that aren't really active and aren't really being used. Um, so typically a 10 year gap is good, but you can go all the way back to 2000 um, or you can just do a one year gap if that's what you want to look at. We're going to keep it um, at a 10 year gap. So the first thing we see here is a map showing where most of the profiles are coming from. Um, so we can see that a lot of them are coming from Birmingham, Alabama. And then we have the actual number of profiles and the percentages below. Um, so about 16% of the profiles do come from Birmingham. Then we have Huntsville, Mobile, Montgomery, so on and so forth. Next, we are going to have our some example um, profiles here. So it starts with just five profiles and it just pulls five random ones here. So we haven't selected anything other than the region of Alabama. Um, and if you jump to the profiles list, I believe it will show you 100 profiles. Um, I believe that's correct. And you can click into them and, you know, read through them. You'll see the name, the their current job title of what they've given, um, any other information that they've put on their public profiles. This is 
public information. Um, what skills they say they have, you know, are they an alum of a certain school, that kind of thing. Um, next, we're going to see the top companies that are mentioned in worker profiles, how many profiles they're mentioned in, and what is the percentage. Um, so once again, we've got our first top 10. So it looks like University of Alabama is the highest when it comes to the profiles. Next is US Army, Walmart, so on and so forth. Um, and then we've got our top occupations. Um, and this is where we're going to add in a filter. So we can look through and see, OK, in Alabama, these are the top occupations, chief executives, um, managers, general operation managers, so on and so forth. Um, what I want to do here is I want to add in a filter for the registered nurses. So maybe, you know, I work at an institution in Alabama that has a nursing program. Um, and I want to see, you know, what do the profiles look like for nurses? Where are they coming from? Where are they living? What schools are they saying that they've attended? That kind of thing. Um, so if you just check mark the register nurses and then you can click add to filter, it's going to rerun our report to now include that occupation. Um, so we could scroll back up to the top and we'll see, you know, a change in our number of profiles. But what I really wanted to see here, you know, now I can see more specific um, worker profiles that are going to be focusing on the nursing occupation, um, more specific companies here as well, and then also what are the different job titles that fall under that registered nursing occupation. So of course registered nurse is um, a job title, but we can also see um, hospital healthcare professionals, charge nurses, case management, registered nurses, school nurses, so on and so forth. And then it's also going to show me what are the top schools that are being mentioned in these registered nursing profiles. So I can see, you know, University of Alabama, Jacksonville State University, some of the community colleges as well are mentioned. And if I wanted to kind of narrow this down to see, okay, of the registered nurses, how many of them attended, you know, the community colleges and mention that on their profiles, I could go through and select all of the community colleges and then add them into my filter to kind of narrow that down even more if that was something I wanted to do. Or if I wanted to know how many are just at my specific college, I could select that one and then apply it to my filter. Next, we'll see our top programs. So what are the programs for people that um, who say they hold the position of a registered nurse? What programs are they saying that they completed? Um, so of course, our top one is going to be registered nursing but it does look like some of them you know maybe started out with a biology degree or a psychology degree even education and then maybe transferred um, into something else and then lastly we've got our skills here that they are mentioning in their profiles um, so their top skill is nursing patient safety CPR um, once again it starts with the first top 10 but if you want to see more you can just click on more and it will show you um, all of the different skills that they are listing on their profiles. And then we have our common skills. So these were our specialized skills, so a little bit more career specific. Um, then we have our common skills, which are going to be your more what I like to consider your transferable skills. So from one career pathway to another. And then lastly, what are the top qualifications that they are mentioning on their profiles? Um, so basic life support certification, pediatric advanced life support, licensed practical nurse. So what are those different certifications that are mentioned um, for in the talent in this region? And then we can see more information there. Um, and that brings us to the end of the profile analytics report. Um, once again, we kept this very um, very wide. We kind of started with just the entire state of Alabama and then we honed in on um, nursing. But if you wanted to look specifically at, you know, people who go to this specific school with this specific program, you know, what are they saying that they're doing? What skills are they saying they're having? That is a this is a great resource for that information. Um, it can also be helpful for you to see, you know, what your graduates have done once they leave and what the talent looks like in your region as well. And that brings us to the end of the report. And I think also brings us to our Q&A section. So I will go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Thanks, Kimberly. Yeah, thank you. That was great. Um, we definitely have a number of questions, which is great. Um, there are a couple of them. If you asked a question 
specific to a report, I tried to keep up, but I sort of lost <laughs> track of some of these. So like, there's a question, um, it just says, is there one for data analytics? So if that was your question or you had a question similar to that, if you could just pop something else in there, I can see your name so I can try to match them up, but just sort of a, an idea of which report you're talking about would be um, helpful. So a couple of questions. So for profile analytics, Kimberly mentioned it's only available in the US, but if you are a US user and you aren't seeing profile analytics, um, could you help explain why that might be? Yeah, definitely. Um, so profile analytics is not really included in the basic analyst package, um, depending on when you purchased it. Um, so it is something that you can get added to. You would just have to talk to your account manager about that. Um, Chantel, did you want to add anything to that? Oh, that's perfect. That's exactly right. Great. Um, okay. This was, and I kind of have an idea of when Kimberly took over. So I think, Kimberly, this is when in your report. Um, Local job supply on the company talent profile report. What is local job supply on that report? Okay, that is a good question. Um, so the local job supply, I'm just gonna pull it up really quick so I can take a look at it. Um, so that is going to show them um, the job postings for the occupation in the last 30 days, um, not including what company we've selected. So other than Amazon, how many, um, it, people in the region are asking for stalkers and order fillers within the last 30 days. Um, where is profile analytics data collected from? Oh, that is a great question. Um, I don't know the exact number off the top of my head. Chantel, you might know the exact number, um, but we do pull from, we scrape our data from um, public worker profiles um, from a lot of different sources. Do you know the number off the top of your head, Chantel? Uh, I don't, but I can look really fast. If you actually use profile analytics and just search nationwide and um, without any limit limit on it, it'll pull in and tell you how many millions of profiles that we're, we're searching. Yes, so it says um, 137.94 million profiles. So that's where they're all coming from. Just a couple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect, thanks. Um, Okay, some of these, Chantel, were for your reports, but I don't know what reports they go to. Um, so I think this was when you were showing um, one of the tables, but they asked about timeframes. There's options mm -hmm. for timeframes um, other than what you were showing. Yeah, so when it comes to our government data, we go back, we have data, historical data from 2001, and then we project forward 10 years. So some of our methodology behind projection is you know, we look at the last 5, 10, and 15 years and just say if the trends of the past hold true, then this is what we project to happen over the next 10 years. And then you can set your time frame to be either, you know, one year projection, five year, 10 year based on um, the search that, that you're trying to do. Um, for our Canadian clients, we don't go out 10, we go out seven, we project out seven years. So you can set your time frame however you want. Perfect. Thanks. Um okay. Um, I think this was also from the company talent profile report. Um, what does local graduate, um, what is that um, data point? Um, so that is pulling in, um, I had the same question when I pulled it up. I was like, oh, what is that? Um, so that is pulling in the, um, the graduates from programs that are related to that occupation within the region. Um, so the sources are coming from um, IPEDS and NCES. Um, so it's going to tell you, you know, for this occupation, these are the programs that recently put out graduates that would be related to that. Great, thanks. 
Um, great Some compliments. Great job, guys. Oh, um, Kimberly, I should have started with this question. Someone really wanted to know what the name of your dog is. Oh, <laughs> um, that's Flynn. He's taking a nap right now, um, <laughs> as you can see back there. But his name is Flynn. <laughs> a cameo in the webinar. Yeah. <laughs> An important member of the team, for sure. Uh, okay, I think I'm trying to, trying to make sure I can, uh, I've asked all the questions that can be answered. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I've got most of them. Um, and we're, we're coming up on time. So this was great, guys. Thank you for, um, so much really good information for people. Um, I will, we will be sending the recording of the session out by the end of the week. So everyone who registered will get the recording and then um, all the questions that were asked um, will all go to the account manager so that they um, can follow up if needed. Um, but thanks again and thanks to everyone for joining us. Have a great, um, have a great rest of your day. Have a great holiday. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye.